I'm Ambeto Campo, public historian, academic, newspaper columnist, independent curator, and like Ben Cab, whose work I will be discussing today, a pack rat of all things Filipiniana. In this episode of Cultural Cash Online, I will be talking about Ang Tao from the Cultural Center of the Philippines Visual Arts Collection. I've been asked to comment on national artist Benedicto Cabrera's Ang Tao, a painting I had only known for many years in Sepia, printed in the catalog of his landmark Larawan exhibition at Luz Gallery in 1972. Unlike the other works in the show, Ang Tao was not even reproduced as a whole page in the catalog because of its configuration. It is oversized and rectangular rather than boring square. It was not highlighted in the catalog and shares a page with text by art critic Alfredo Roses. Having familiarity with the work only as a photo, I had always imagined it to be small, like many of Ben Cab's early graphic works. Then, sometime after the 1986 People's Power Revolution, I finally saw it. It was hanging on a wall in the office of Dr. Nicanor Chongzon, then the Vice President and Artistic Director of CCP. Andito ka lang pala, I said in my head, as if I had bumped into a long-lost friend in the street. Surprised by its size, I said to myself again, Ang laki mo pala! The painting ornamented one end of the room facing Dr. Chongson's desk and dominated a small sitting area with a coffee table where the old man could have been mistaken for a waiter. In real life, Ang Tao was not in sepia, nor in black and white, as I had imagined. It had color, deftly applied to mimic stains on archival photograph, distressed and ravaged by time. The image, painted in acrylic on two separate sheets of paper, was cut in half. Necessity forced Ben Cab to crop the image in two to work around the issue of paper size, its result was serendipitous because it now invites the viewer to process and appreciate the work differently. If Ang Tao were painted on one extraordinarily large sheet of paper, I believe it would not have worked out so well. Looking at the old man, cut in half at the waist, I associated it with a manananggal. However, manananggals are beautiful, sexy maidens not the stooped old man in wrinkled clothes holding a crumpled hat. Ben Cab's Ang Tao is a shameless display of skill in drapery. It is so lifelike, it seems it could walk out of the picture frame and step down on the sofa. I noted that he is barefoot and has splayed feet, a deformity presumably acquired from years of walking without footwear. Dr. Chongson had called me to a meeting then to discuss research on the Canor Abelardo for a folio to be printed on the occasion of the naming of the CCP main hall in his honor. Needless to say, I was distracted during that meeting by Ang Tao, a metaphorical fly on the wall who overheard all discussions, arguments, banter, and gossip in Dr. Chongson's room. If only he could speak or write. Walking along the corridors of power in the CCP then was quite a treat because there hung, like visible museum storage, works from the CCP Visual Arts Collection not on permanent display in the public areas, like my all-time favorites, The Fiery Genesis by H.R. Ocampo in Abelardo Hall and The Star, Black and White by Arturo Luz in the Little Theater Lobby. Because the doors of the empty CCP boardroom were always open, I would often make a detour on my way out just to see works not normally accessible to the public. When I walked by the executive offices, I did so slowly, 
peeking into open doors, not to gossip, but to gauge the taste of these gods of the CCP based on what they chose to decorate their walls. Seeing an tao then, and seeing it again now, is like catching up with an old dear friend I have not seen for more than three decades. Ang tao did not emanate from Ben Cab's imagination. It is based on an old photograph. This has led to some ignorant comments on appropriation and criticism of Ben Cab's Larawan as tired images drawn out of an old baul. While it can be argued that many artists have the same skill that enables them to copy or appropriate an archival photograph, we can do a better job at that with a scanner or a smartphone. But Ben Cab does not just copy. He filters the images from the late 19th or early 20th century Philippines through his eyes, places the image in context by his readings and experience, then, with the instinctive sense of design and exceptional draftsmanship that is both the backbone and power of his work, he creates a new representation of the past that speaks to the present. Old images are not used for simple nostalgia. They are repurposed to evoke an interplay of past, present, and future. I am partial to Ben Cab's Larawan because they are representational and require more patience than the abstract and colorful Sabel series, which are more confident by art collectors. As a historian, I have come across the visual sources for the Larawan series in my research, and these helped me appreciate how Ben Cab, like many expatriate Filipinos, has learned to love the land of his birth more when they were separated from it. As a Filipino expatriate in London in the early 1970s, Ben Cab rediscovered the Philippines in old maps, prints, and books, sold cheaply in flea markets and antique shops. This awareness of the past went beyond mere textbook Philippine history. Ben Cab's reflections gave context to his present and in his art spoke to the future. For example, Ang Tao originates from a photograph that appeared as a frontispiece to Catherine Mayo's 1925 book, The Isles of Fear, The Truth About the Philippines. Mayo had gained international notoriety for her 1927 book, Mother India, that was denounced by no less than Mahatma Gandhi. Isles of Fear was controversial both in the Philippines and in the United States because Mayo concluded that the U.S. had not prepared the Philippines and the Filipinos for immediate independence. She criticized the pro-Filipino Governor General Francis Burton Harrison and praised Governor General Leonard Wood, who was tarred and feathered as being anti-Filipino for being at odds with Manuel L. Quezon and other Filipino politicians. A few years short of being a century old, Isles of Fear makes for very painful reading today because the present looks very much like the past. Mayo chose the Tao, or Ben Cab's Ang Tao, as the frontispiece because he represented the Filipino everyman, the Juan de la Cruz whose future lay in the hands of Filipino leaders who have failed him. One could say that Ang Tao manifests in different shapes and forms today from a street urchin begging for loose change in the streets of Metro Manila to a victim of extrajudicial killings mourned by friends and kin. In 1972, Nick Joaquin asked, is Ben Cab using the past to comment on the present? During those dark days of martial law, this was the safe way to do it. 50 years later, in 2022, we look sadly at Ang Tao again, wondering, when will his life change for the better? Thank you for joining me on this episode of Cultural Cash Online.